Hi, I'm Joe Polizzi, and this is the Content Inc. Podcast. Five minutes every Monday for content creators who desire to be content entrepreneurs. Real quick note, we will be announcing the dates and the location of CEX 2023 Creator Economy Expo in the next few weeks. Subscribers of the Tilt.com and my random newsletter at JoePolizzi.com will get the absolute best deal possible. So make sure you subscribe at the Tilt.com or JoePolizzi.com in the next few days. I really hope to see you and talk to you there in person. I've talked about this issue quite a few times, but it came up recently again and I wanted to go through it. I was having a discussion with a marketer about acquiring content creator brands. Now this marketer has been thinking about developing a real acquisition strategy and is deciding to go after small independent content creators. Now I, of course, thought this made sense, both with the rise of content creators literally everywhere and the fact at least according to the Tilt research, that about 20% are actively thinking about selling their content businesses. So, should be lots of opportunities there. Now, we talked first about what they were thinking about buying. Now, most of the creators either had a podcast or an email newsletter. Those creators with Instagram or TikTok accounts as their main homes were pretty much dismissed. I mean, you can't buy their social media channels, they don't own those, but you can buy a podcast feed of listeners and an email list. Now, second, and maybe more importantly, we were discussing the idea of a content brand. Any creator that had a content brand that was the name of the creator were summarily dismissed. Now, think about that for a second. Not even considered. If you understand how these deals work, it does make sense though. This marketer, or the buyer in this case, understands that the creator will stay on for maybe two, three, or four years. Could be longer, but you can only count on what's in the purchase agreement. When the creator wants to leave and the brand is the creator's, it's a sticky situation. Also, the brand is fully tied to the persona of that creator. If, God forbid, the creator got into some kind of scandal, the content brand probably wouldn't survive. It's much easier to protect a content brand that lives a bit outside the creator's image. Now, I was thinking about Content Marketing Institute, the brand my wife and I sold in 2016. What if that was named like Polizzi Consulting or something like that? Who would want to buy it? It would probably not even be capable for us to sell that asset. Now, the learnings from my meeting were this. First, You need actual assets to sell. Podcast brands with regular downloads, a website with SEO indexed content, or an email newsletter with subscribers. Those can all be purchased by a media company or a brand, whether you have revenue or not, actually. Now, second, set your expectations if you are the content brand. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of advantages to everything being about you. Probably get better opportunities at book deals and speaking appearances. I've heard from creators in this situation that sometimes it's easier to sell sponsorships, but if you're trying to sell the asset someday, that is one situation where your name simply doesn't help. Finally, it's worth noting that some of you out there would never consider selling your business, or maybe you've never even thought of it. Regardless, it's a good practice to think about what your exit strategy would be. Are you leaving the business to the kids? Are you going to dissolve it? Are you going to hand it over to a partner? The sheer majority of creators never think about this at all, and I believe that's a mistake. Frankly, why are you doing this, and what do you want to happen with your content business? Ultimately, I believe getting something on paper that you can look at on a regular basis is probably what you need so you know where you want to take this thing. Good luck.